Hello and welcome, or welcome back. My name is Josh, and today we're talking about the Pentax K1000. The Pentax K1000 is a 35mm SLR that was introduced by Pentax in 1976. It quickly became one of the most popular film cameras of all time and remained in production until 1997. The K1000 was designed as a simplified version of Pentax's Spotmatic series of cameras which were popular in the 60s and 70s. The K1000 was intended to be an affordable entry-level camera that would appeal to students and hobbyists who wanted a reliable, easy-to-use SLR. It was introduced as part of a line of cameras such as the KX, the K2, and the KM, which heralded the change from the M42 screw mount to the Pentax K mount. One of the key features of the K1000 was the fully mechanical design. Unlike many cameras of the time, the K1000 did not rely on batteries for basic operation, only to power the light meter. This made it highly reliable and easy to use even for beginners. The camera allowed the user to adjust the aperture and shutter speed which gave the photographer more creative control over their image. It was also widely used by professional photographers who appreciated the simplicity and reliability. And today, the K1000 is still highly regarded by many photographers and is considered a classic camera of the film era. This camera has a horizontally traveling rubberized silk focal plane shutter. With speeds of 1 second to 1 1,000th one of a second, flash sync at 1 60th of a second, and bulb mode for any long exposures. The viewfinder is nearly identical to the Spotmatic with a 0.88 times magnification and 92% image coverage. In the viewfinder, you'll find it has a matte area surrounding a microprism spot, and on the right side, you'll find the light meter. When you adjust the f-stop or shutter speed, the needle will bounce up or down, and when the exposure is correct, the needle will be centered. The K1000 that I own can shoot films with speeds from 20 ASA to 3200 ASA. For metering, we have a CDS full frame through the lens average metering. There's no self-timer and the camera takes one SR or LR44 battery. And one thing to note, when you're not using the camera and you're storing it, you should always leave a lens cap on because there's no on-off switch for the light meter, so it works continuously. Remember that. On the top plate, from left to right, you'll see you have your rewind knob. You've got a hot shoe in the middle for a flash sync of an electronic flash that's at 1 60th of a second. You've got your shutter speed and your ASA dial. You've got your shutter release button with a cable release socket, and you've got your winder with the frame counter in the center of it. If nothing else, the K1000 demonstrates the value of simplicity, but there are pros and cons to this camera, so why don't we get into those? The first pro that I have is that it's simple and reliable. The K1000 is a fully mechanical camera, meaning that it doesn't require batteries for basic operation, just for the light meter. So that makes it reliable and easy to use for beginners. And bouncing off of that, the manual controls of this thing are just another pro. Anytime that you're given a camera that isn't reliant on auto exposure, you know, things like aperture priority, it allows you to have more creative control over your image. Another pro about this camera is that you have a wide array of interchangeable lenses for this camera. Uh, I, I bought a Ricoh XR2, which I actually have a video about, and uh, the lenses from that camera end up fitting on the K1000 and vice versa. Um, so there's a ton of lenses out there for you to choose from if you get this camera. Another pro, and I know that this is uh, even more appealing now that film prices are skyrocketing, but the K1000 is relatively inexpensive, which makes it an excellent choice for photographers who are just starting out or for those who might be on a tight budget. Another one of the pros is that the light meter, so long as there is ample ambient light, is very easy to read with the needle just going up and down, and all you got to do is center it. And the last pro that I'll mention is that it's just got a solid build. Depending on the the type that you got, I know that from, I think, 1990 to 1997, um, these cameras were made with plastic bodies, um, but anything prior to that, like this one, you'll have um, an, an all-metal body, so it's got a really solid build, and um, I really feel like I could drop this thing and, and nothing will happen to it. My particular Pentax K1000 was actually gifted to me by my girlfriend's grandparents and has been all around the world, has been taking cameras since the 70s 
And uh, I think it actually went to Vietnam and it came back and it still works like a charm. I had to put new batteries in it, but it still works as it's intended. So these things are sturdy and durable and they're beasts. A lot of my cons are gonna kind of actively contradict the pros a little bit. And I don't, I don't mean to do that intentionally, but the bright spots are definitely a kind of have a, a little bit of an undercurrent of dark spot beneath them. The first one is that it doesn't have any auto exposure, which means that the photographer has to manually adjust everything. And while they may not be seen as a con to anyone out there, it can just maybe make the shooting process a little bit more difficult, uh, a little bit more hands-on, and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm throwing it in the con category for anyone out there who's expecting to buy a camera with an automatic exposure mode there isn't one on this camera, so be aware of that. The other thing bouncing off of that is that the, this camera has very limited features. Uh, it doesn't have some advanced features that are common in modern cameras, but also that were somewhat common in cameras from the 1970s. It doesn't have things like multiple exposure or a depth of field preview, and it doesn't have a self timer, which really bugs me sometimes, but what are you gonna do? Another thing that I would have liked to see, and maybe it's just because I'm spoiled because a bunch of my other cameras have it, is that uh, when you view the exposure meter in the viewfinder, it doesn't tell you what your shutter speed is, number one. It doesn't tell you what f-stop you're shooting at, number two. So it's not a full information viewfinder, which can be a little annoying. The, it, it's easy to read because you get the needle and all you got to do is center it. But I like to have a little bit more information, a little bit more understanding of the settings that I'm at without having to take my eye off of the viewfinder and look at the lens or look at the shutter speed. Uh, I would I would prefer to just have all that information within the viewfinder. So um, again, it kind of goes on with the, the limited features con, but yeah, the, the, the not having a full information viewfinder is definitely a, a problem for me. Then the next one is kind of a two-parter. There isn't a shutter lock, number one, which can be annoying because I'm always a bit worried that I'm going to advance the shutter to take another picture, but then I'm gonna end up not taking that picture and then I'm gonna throw my camera in my bag. And I'm always worried that accidentally something's gonna knock into the shutter release button and end up firing that frame to just be a blank image. And that could just be remedied by having a shutter lock. And on that note, there should be an on-off switch for the light meter. Um, like I mentioned earlier in my breakdown, there's no on off switch for the exposure meter, so it just works continuously, draining the battery um, anytime that it's, I guess, not being covered. So definitely always remember that you have to have a, a lens cap on it when you're storing it, uh, if you're not storing it in a place that's completely dark. I said something earlier that I want to reiterate, that if nothing else, the K1000 demonstrates the value of simplicity. When I was going through my favorite photos that I've taken on each of my cameras, oddly enough, this one popped out more photos in fewer rolls. And that's not to say that it's my favorite camera to use, it's certainly not, but it got a higher hit rate than any of my other cameras, and that's probably saying something. Overall, the Pentax K1000 is a reliable and straightforward camera that is well suited for photographers who prefer manual control and simplicity over advanced features and any sort of automation. Its affordability and compatibility with a wide range of lenses make it a great choice for beginners or anyone on a tight budget. However, its lack of automatic exposure or any fun features or bells and whistles means that it may not be suitable for all types of photography. So if you're someone who's thinking about buying this camera, and you haven't already, hopefully this video was enough to convince you to or to not buy it. I definitely think it's worth getting as a beginner, but I do think that its lack of those bells and whistles um, can be frustrating sometimes. And that's all I have to say about the Pentax K1000. The only other thing that's left to do for me to either convince you to buy it or not convince you to buy it is show you some photos that I've personally taken on the Pentax K1000. So without further ado, let's go check those out and I'll see you guys next time.